Hey, how's it going? And welcome back to some more Creation Club mods, where I buy them and show you what is or what is not, so you can decide whether they're worth your hard-earned cash or not. And in this video, we'll be looking at the Arms of Chaos, which is a mod that involves restoring artifacts of chaos related to the Staff of Chaos, and is available for purchase at the princely sum of 500 credits, which is around five of your colonial dollars, or approximately four of Her Majesty's finest and magnificent pounds. This creation was primarily made by Private Eye, while the quest was created by Chris Takahashi, who is by all accounts a very busy little bee these days it seems. Ok, we'll do this the usual way, a brief overview of the quest, and look at the mod in detail, and I'll give my thoughts at the end. So let's crack on. And as usual, on downloading the mod, a quest will be added to your list. And we pop in here. We have to pop over to Sky Temple Ruins, which is not very far from the College of Winterhold, but will involve a little bit of swimming. And once you're there, Sky Temple Ruins is very simply a very, very small barrow with an altar. And protecting it are several of these lovely little gentlemen which we come across before. So you have to deal with these guys. And once you have, you'll come across a small room with several artifacts, including a couple of inert staffs and amulets and a few other bits and bobs, including a dead body. And once we've dealt with these fine little gentlemen, we just pop into the barrow. There's a sort of little bits and bobs worth picking up. Oh, and on a side note, right next to this is a door entering into the tomb itself. Uh, don't forget that, there's a decent chest there. Anyway, make sure you read the journal. I'll undo that now. And you simply pick up the marked artifacts. As I said before, don't forget to pop into that room. Beware, there is a drogger in there though. Okay. So now we have to search for information on the Sea Stallion, and that involves popping over to Winterhold. And if you're a new character like mine is, who's a still at level 1, uh, you can either fast travel there, or if you haven't been there like me, then just take a carriage ride over to Windhelm. And once you've arrived at Windhelm, then just pop down to the docks. Now the doors to this place open I think around about 10 o'clock in the morning so you may have to set your timer on this one. And inside here you're going to find a note giving you the next stage of the quest. You will also find a potion of water breathing, a couple of scrolls of flame cloak and some fire salts. I don't know what the fire salts for, but just grab them. Uh, the scrolls, uh, flame cloak scrolls, are to be used against slaughter fish, so make sure you take them. They could be useful. Um, if you're like me, you haven't found this area, you've got a bit of a hike to get there. It is right out in the middle of nowhere. And once you're there, we've got to go for a little dip. Uh, if you're in survival mode, uh, make sure you take that into account. Now, a little trick here is head towards the, the marker point, and when it starts to move, you're right above the wreck. Just so long. Okay, you can see now it's starting to move. That's it, you're above it now. And then just dive down. Now, I would hotkey the water breathing potion and only use it if you absolutely must to. There you go. And we've got the ring. And we the notes. Read all these notes, they're actually quite interesting. They're well written, actually. And head back up. As you see, I didn't need the water breathing potion and I didn't get attacked by a slaughterfish. But I could have needed them. Okay, so. The next part of the quest is head back to Sky Temple Ruins, and what we've got to do is activate this thing. And to do this, we need to put on the ring, the Sovereign Band. 
which is not a decent ring, especially at an early, uh, an early level. So now, because I'm so weak, I've brought um, my Curio and I've brought uh, Storm Atronach with me. Because we've got to deal with three Dramera, 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 Dramera Lords. Okay, each one becoming increasingly more difficult. Okay. I got killed quite a few times. There's no way I would have been able to do this solo with this character at the level she is. Okay, deal with these guys. And also you pick up some very good loot here if you're a low level. Look, I'm doing no damage to him at all. And Stormy takes care of him. There you go. Once that's done... Thank you, Stormy. Why are you pint for that? And you simply run to each Dramora body and you loot them. And like I say, you can pick up some pretty good stuff as well. Like Daedra Hearts and stuff, so. And each one gives you a, uh, a sigil stone. Which is what you need. And you get a, a Daedric Sword and a Daedric Helmet. Absolutely fantastic. So now we have to go and make them. Now the amulet can be smithed at any forge, but the staffs need a staff enchanter. And the only one available in the vanilla game is in Tel Mithrin. And Master Neeloth will uh, grant access to it upon completion of the quest Reluctant Steward. However, several mods add them in, including Mirwatch Tower and this mod Ryx End, which in my opinion is the best role-playing player home I've come across so far. Now, there's no need to worry. Uh, you don't have to bring or find any other crafting gear. You just need the appropriate sigil stones, obviously, which you picked up when you killed the Daedra. Okay, that's done. Oh, if you like the look of this uh, player home as well, I did a video on this a uh, couple of weeks ago. Go check it out. It's definitely worth having. This is the extended version, um, but there are versions available for Xbox One and PS4. Okay, so you simply crazy staffs now if you notice my enchanting and i haven't enchanted anything in this character and my enchanting has jumped up to 61. there you go so that's another little bonus okay let's take a little look at these beauties and we'll start with the arm of the sun which burns the target for 20 points and there's a 30 percent chance for frost and shock to do 20 points of damage so it, this is effectively uh, the chaos enchantment in a staff uh, now uh, bear in mind as well uh, staffs are just a magic of free ways to cast spells now the amount of charge and energy consumed is reduced with your skill level or any fortify effects that you have if you get or if you get casting down to zero, then the staff effectively has infinite energy. Now, the armor sun will be affected by the fire, ice, and lightning destruction perks, and it does affect how much damage you can do with this staff. It's actually a very good looking piece, in my opinion. Very nicely, <laughs> very nicely detailed, actually. Okay. Next up we have the Arm of the Moon, which actually I think is a far better looking staff. I actually love the way the, uh, the greeny blue kind of sigil stone revolves around that. Uh, this has a random chance to demoralize or frenzy a target uh, for 60 seconds. Now, as far as I can tell, this isn't caps. Now, a lot of these caps, uh, sorry, these staffs will go up to level eight, level 20, and level 30, etc. As far as I can tell, um, this staff uh, isn't caps at uh, any level, which makes it uniquely good for certain types of uh, play. The problem is, of course, you don't know what you're going to be getting because it is going to be a demoralised or frenzy. So bear that in mind. But again, I love the look of this staff. I think it's fantastic looking. Okay, so moving on. 
Now, the Warlock's Mark is an interesting one. If you're playing as a character that doesn't use Conjuration, then it's pretty damn useless. However, if you do, then this is a very valuable item, especially at a low level, as Conjuration is one of the most painful skills to level, in my opinion. And this 30% reduction in magicka costs enables you to cast conjuration spells such as an atronach or a bound weapon more often helping you to level up much much faster so for my character here it's far more valuable than staffs themselves and of course the one thing I've missed here is the ring which is a dual enchanted thing which is only really good at uh, low levels gives you an increase of 50 points of magicka and magicka uh, increases 10% faster again it really is for low level characters so uh, you'll be dumping that quick enough for selling it so there you go that's what you get so let's take it out for a bit of a test run this should be a very brief fight my character has uh, no armor whatsoever has level one and taken all the white run cards so uh, this should be a bit of fun and of course I'm not getting any benefits of uh, destruction perks either so these really are at their absolute base level. I hate playing with these in third party as well. Yeah, if you're going to use staffs, you do it in first person. <laughs> I'm not getting much frenzy here. There you go. <laughs> yeah, so you go. They look, they look great. I'm not really 100% sure how uh, how useful these are. They look, they do look good, and they're they're a lot of fun. Okay, see so how far I can get with this. Oh, missed damp. Yeah, not doing much damage there. But like I say, no perks or uh, enchantments. So. Uh, Oh, and we're done. Okay, so let's go and see what we think. Now, as usual, these are just my opinions, and you should judge whether you think this mod is right for you based on all the info I've shown so far. But here goes for my tuppenny thoughts on this mod. Um, 500 credits gets you the Arms of Chaos mod, giving you the Arm of the Sun, the Arm of the Moon, two unique staffs, um, as well as an amulet and a new ring, along with a minor quest. And you also get a great bump in your enchanting leveling when you make the staffs. The quest itself is fun but short, but probably one of the best ones from Creation Club mods. But something is really off lore-wise if this is important to you. Now according to the lore for this mod, it is a descendant of the maker of the original stuff of Chaos was trying to recreate the artifacts from Elder Scrolls Arena in the form of Arms of Chaos as an attempt to retrace its power. Now, the Staff of Chaos was a massively powerful artifact in that game. Indeed, it was something you aspired to. However, this mod feels like a, a pale imitation of the original and really not a lot in keeping with its lore. Um, the staffs are really nothing special at all. And indeed, if I'm gonna be honest, there are many staffs in the base game are much, much better these should be weapons you uh, should be able to carry through your whole playthrough especially as you've paid for them um, but you don't get that feeling of immense power the stay staff of chaos should have and for 500 credits uh, it's way 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 too under underpowered to even take you halfway through an entire game uh, even the amulet and ring will become redundant once your enchanting hits a certain level so it will end up in a chest somewhere shortly after you've made the purchase or you may indeed sell them so as a comparison of buying this mod or say the staff of hazadoki mod i personally would plump for the staff of hazadoki anyway as I said, these are just my thoughts and I hope you, I've given you enough information for you to make up your own mind whether you think this mod is right for you or not. And uh, I hope you enjoyed the vid and uh, see you later. I hope you enjoyed the video and if you did, please leave a like and come and have a little chat in the comments section. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe. Love you.